Okay, so I got up early one Sunday morning, checked my satellite tracker, and we were going to get almost overhead passes over my location from number 15, 18 and 19. So I thought I'd try my hand, because a couple of weeks ago I tried to get some passes and they were not that successful, there was a lot of interference, and the pitch was not good, so I've been waiting to have another go. Then I've got something to show you. So if you look over on the waterfall, you can see number 19 is just getting up on the horizon. Uh, it's 3.94 degrees elevation at the moment, so not expecting a lot at this point. But surely in a minute or two, we'll be able to get some decent reception. Now you can see there's some activity on airband next to it, and that is certainly going to disrupt it. So I'll just have to hope that the number 19 signal is strong enough to punch through it. The eagle eyed among you may notice I've also got Meteor M2 on the same frequency. I've never picked that up, so we'll see what happens with that. But we'll give it a minute until we get some elevation. And we'll see how it works out. So if you look on the top right hand side, you can see the number 19 satellite. And my location, M0 RLF, right in the middle of the country, right in the middle of the United Kingdom. Okay, so I'm just having a flap around there, changing the waterfall settings so it will make a little bit more sense. I like a slow waterfall when I'm tracking satellites and signals I'm not familiar with. It means if I miss a signal on an adjacent frequency, I've normally got five minutes to go and click on it or hover over it and find out what that frequency is. And as you can see, even that we're now at almost 10 degrees elevation and the WX2 image decoder has kicked in. Not having great expectations at this point, it's going to be mostly noise. I keep telling it not to record until it hits 20 degrees or 25 degrees. But it should clean the image up later anyway. Now you can see the Doppler is doing its stuff, it's tuning down. So we're basically at 137100 plus 2.5k of Doppler shift and that Doppler shift is dropping as it becomes more overhead. Very dependent on the elevation as well as the altitude. If you have a lower elevation the Doppler effect will be much lower. Okay we're coming up to 22 degrees elevation and you're going to see a, a marked improvement in the signal. I know this because I've put the audio on after the filming because uh, I was setting my pyjamas. This was, you know, 10 to 9 in the morning and I've been watching it for a little while. So there we go, we just hit 24 degrees elevation and the signal miraculously clears up. Now I suspect this is because of an obstruction to me picking up the signal directly. So it must have arisen over my house is the answer. Or the neighbour's house or whatever. I'm still trying to figure this out geographically as to exactly what happens and why it happens but certainly when that signal saturates you can see the improvements on the water hole, waterfall on the left. We're getting a really good saturating signal and the interference from the other signals is less even though there's a black band on the waterfall it's barely showing anything up at all on WX2 image. So this is number 19. And the thing I've noticed with Noah 19 is it really produces quite a wide uh, signal. It's not just, you won't notice on this screen, but it, when it expands the actual image, it's almost 50%, maybe twice as wide as Noah 15 and 18. It's a slightly weaker signal, I feel, but it's a good one if you can capture it clean like this. I think the total elevation expectation was about 60 or 70 degrees. And it's now almost directly overhead if we look up to the top. Because it's going from sort of north slightly west to south slightly east. So it's never going to be directly overhead. And this is a good pass for my antenna. If you have a QFH antenna or a dipole, you would like it to be directly in line. But with a vertical collinear, which I think is what the Diamond X50 is, you don't. You don't want it overhead because that's its worst point. So we'll get an almost linear signal strength as it comes from one horizon overhead and out on the other horizon because of this 
60, 70 degree elevation. And th this is why I was so excited this morning and rushed to do this recording and didn't plug a microphone in. So we're seven minutes into what I recorded. I think there's still eight minutes to go, but it falls off pretty rapidly the other side. So another two or three minutes of this and then we can, I can, I'm just going to show you the highlights of the other satellites. We don't need to recite the same chapter and verse to, to identify what's going on. I am using G-Predict. It, it was all set up for those three satellites. Uh, it's set up to do exactly what I want it to do, which is to record those satellites if they're over 25 degrees. There seem to be different capture settings for each program. So WX to Image will have one set of settings that it works to and G-Predict will have another set. Uh, and then you've got the LOS and AOS settings as well. The, the above horizon and loss of sight. So that's almost finished now. It's a really clean picture. So I'm going to jump ahead now and I'm going to show you the results. Because otherwise you're just sitting here watching me rabbiting. So let's skip ahead. Okay, so you can see the central part of the picture is really clear. And then the sig signal's degraded eventually on the other side. So any second now, and if I move my face out of the way, we should be able to see it processing it. And there we go. So that's building the first image now. That's the progress bar for it, the blue one. My Kepler's are three days out of date. It didn't seem to affect it, but I did resolve it. So there we go. First image is processing. So we're watching this area. I'm pointing and you can't see. The area to the right of me, the big one on W extra image. And there we go. So there's two good images there. Some of the best I've had. That's a composite made from those. And I will post these on the blog for you to have a look because these are the best images I've had so far. And I've reduced the number of images it produces as well because it doesn't make that much sense. But it was a nice clean morning but there was some cloud base moving across and there were nice swirly clouds. The sort of thing that we like to see on weather radar. So I'm quite proud of myself for achieving that. There's the composite at the end. Really happy with that. Now when I say it's a composite, it's the first image for the composite. So it's orthographically, orthographically projected onto an imaginary globe to be more realistic. And I think it's just got one more to do. And it's loading it. And here we go. There we go. So that's one with the temperatures on as well. Only a couple of seconds left now. And another orthogonal. There we go. And that is the last one. So I think they're beautiful. It's kind of why we do this thing. And it's producing more. Not sure why it's doing that. Okay, so that's number 19. So we'll come back in a second for the next satellite. Okay, so 15 or 20 minutes later, it's 9.05 now, and number 15 is approaching. And it's just barely there, you can see it. But yeah, it's just coming above the horizon, about what, six degrees above. So <coughs> it's going to start making some noise shortly. So let's jump ahead to where the action starts. Okay, so I'll run the tape. And you can see a nice clean signal. I've expanded it to make it clearer. <coughs> no, oops, shit. And I'll move my head out of the way. So we see the elevation now is just about to hit 23 degrees. And lo and behold, it starts decoding. And this came up really quickly. Uh, it was more northwesterly than the other satellite we just ago did, number 19. And 15, I feel, is the weakest of the three satellites. But uh, I was pretty much in awe at what happened. 
I mentioned it before, but the frequency of this satellite, if you've got G-Predict, it tries to tune us at 137500. It's 137620. You can just override it once the program started, and it seems to remember it until you start it again. Now notice this signal to the right of the NOAA 15 signal. I have noticed this on a couple of occasions. It seems to rise just before NOAA 15 and fall away. But if you look at the Doppler effect, it, the frequency is moving across the same. So it's either a satellite that's on a very similar orbit and I've not been able to work out what it is. Or it's a different antenna on NOAA 15. So if you've got any comments on that as to what it might be, I would be very interested. I have done some research on the frequency uh, around 137.66 and I've not got anywhere with that. Okay, so I think we're more or less overhead there. No, it's still going up. Elevation is still increasing 61 degrees at the moment. Ah, uh, yeah, the dots are the dots are beginning to come together on the top top right hand corner. And there we go. That's 67 degrees elevation. 68, 69. I'll look how clean that signal is now. 71 degrees. And notice now that interference is not affecting the image, even though the, the waterfall is bobbing up and down. And there we go. That that was about the eight. Oh no, it's no, it's still going. 75 degrees. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Elevation, yeah. I think as we get to 90 degrees as as we move, it'll flick as it goes over. 77 degrees elevation. Perfect for my antenna. And then it flips and the elevation starts falling. So let's jump to, to the end and see what we got. Okay, so it's about to start processing. That's looking good. Very happy with that. You can see at the, at the extremities, I don't know what the technical name is, when, it, when it's got very low azimuth, it's coming up over the horizon at both ends, I get a lot of interference. And it's purely due to the location of the antenna. I live in rented property, there's a limit to how high I can put it without planning permission. I should really have a QFH antenna or a V-dipole. I did test a V-dipole, but the one I made was rubbish. So I just told my hands up to say it was rubbish. <laughs> You have to, the whole reason that most of us get into this hobby is so we can experiment, we can learn. Oh, that's a nice one. Uh, again, another half dozen images processing. There's one with the temperatures on. These are the orthogonal ones, so we're coming to the end. Let's see if it does a composite with the other with the NOAA 19. Nice, uh, very hot area there on the right hand side towards Poland and Germany, I think. My geography is atrocious. There we go, and that was the end of that pass. So I've got another pass coming for you, which I think is the NOAA 18. So let's have a look at that.